Okay, here we are. Now my hand's kind of in the way, but you can see how the hydrus is going in beautifully into the canal there. Uh, I'm just nudging it slightly so the inlet is parallel to the iris, about 50% in the anterior chamber, 50% in the canal. But the key how is it, see how it's nice and parallel to the trabecular meshwork. It's pointing, again, not towards the iris or the cornea. And if you look over here, just distal to the inlet, you see this beautiful uh, window scene in the canal itself. This is a really a confirmatory stent. I mean, you really know that it's in the right place. and You can kind of even sense it's scaffolding, opening up the canal, and gaining access to those distal collector channels as well. But what this translates to is this, and this is probably the most exciting part of any mixed procedure in my case, is look at this arrow there. And as I'm doing INA, watch that blanch. Look at those vessels just completely disappear in, again, the distribution of where the hydrus is located. You see that three to three to four clock hours of just complete blanching of the episcleral system. That to me is incredible. And even at the end, I'm just kind of filling up the eye with some BSS. You can see up top there again, look at that hydra, hydra, just look at that blanching. Just by hydrating the wound, you can see that fluid wave as well. So I think what makes this such a, I think, a, a unique and for me, a beneficial stent is the fact that it not only uh, bypasses TM, but you really are scaffolding the canal and really gaining access to those episcleral venous system because we don't know where the resistance to outflow is preoperatively. And if we kind of hedge our bets by scaffolding, gaining access to those collector channels and, and bypassing TM, I think we have a good chance of hopefully getting that pressure to stay down and hopefully even get them off of some meds too, as the data shows. But hopefully this helps you. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.